In the New World Order, the governing body in any nation should be composed of those who work for the greatest good of the greatest number. The New World Order will be founded on an active sense of responsibility. The rule will be all for one and one for all. This attitude among nations will have to be developed. It is not yet present. In the preparatory period for the New World Order, there will be a steady and regulated disarmament. It will not be optional. No nation will be permitted to produce and organize any equipment for the destructive purposes or to infringe on the security of any other nation. One of the first tasks of any future peace conference will be to regulate this matter and gradually see to the disarming of the nations. The Venus Project, founded by Jacques Fresco, upon first glance it appears similar to one of the multitude of ill-fated hippie communes of the 1960s. But upon further study, it too is rooted in the same New World Order, occult, theosophical belief structure. Quoting from their website, one of the basic premises of the Venus Project is that we work towards having all of the Earth's resources as the common heritage of all the world's people. Anything less will simply result in a continuation of the same catalog of problems inherent in the present system. This is exactly what Bailey wrote in the externalization of the hierarchy. The links between the Venus Project and the essence of secret society does, however, run even deeper than a call for communistic sharing of world resources. 33rd degree Masonic author Manly P. Hall said of America's link to the New Atlantis, the New Atlantis sets forth an ideal government of the earth. It foretells that day when in the midst of men there shall rise up a vast institution composed of the philosophic elect, an order of illumined men band together for the purpose of investigating the laws of life and the mysteries of the universe. The age of boundaries is closing, and we are approaching a nobler era when nations shall be no more, when the lines of race and caste shall be wiped out, when the whole earth shall be under one order, one government, one administrative body. Manly P. Hall, alongside gross Christians like Francis Bacon, clearly defined the New World Order's drive to recreate Atlantis. And this theme clearly resurfaces in Presto's architecture, specifically his circular city. The circular city image is one that is notably comparable to artistic versions of Atlantis based on Plato's descriptions of the sunken city. Another warning sign of Fresco's New World Order mentality is his desire to see technology steering mankind's destiny. Many patriots shiver at the idea of biometric identification, specifically the idea of implantable microchips that could be used to track and control humans in a way up until recently it was only envisioned in the Bible. Fresco's vision for the future of humanity goes well beyond that of the simple microchip implant. He foresees humanity needing to merge with the machine or else risk the evolution. He says, when biological technology becomes further advanced, human beings as we know them will become a modified species. If we as human beings fail to include the possibility of this development in our overall social evolution, we will witness the decline of our species. These are not mere coincidences. While seemingly revolutionary in thought, Fresco and his school of thought as espoused by the Zeitgeist vision of rebellion against the system are part and parcel of the same social upheaval being called for, not by humanitarians, but by those who have been planning for the new world order from its earliest stages. It should also be noted that Zeitgeist addendum begins and ends with speaking from Krishnamurti, who was raised from boyhood by the Theosophical Society to be a, quote, world teacher. And even though he broke from the group after declining to be their messiah, he maintained a friendly relationship with them by most accounts. One of the most specific goals of the Theosophists, as dictated by the externalization of the hierarchy, is the following. The education of the advanced thinkers, of the aspirants and world disciples in applied knowledge, expressed wisdom, and occult understanding. This group synthesizes all that is available in the other two groups, and thus forms the nucleus of the kingdom of God, of the fifth kingdom, which is so rapidly coming into being. 
according to theosophy, starting with its founder, Blavatsky, God in the kingdom of God is really Lucifer. I believe that the church and religion in general in the Western world, which is to say Judaism and Christianity, have given to the world much good and has been beneficial. But like any and all technologies and thinking, and has also brought with it many things which have hurt the human family. And so I think this is why the human family is being mutated. I think we're being brought into a new world, a new world that you are not going to recognize in the next 20 to 50 years. I think this is going to be necessary because the way we're going now, uh, our world is out of control. The violence and the hatred among peoples is going to have to be done away with. There's got to be order on this planet. And I believe that there are certain individuals are ordained to make sure that happens. So I don't have any problem with power. I have problems with people who misuse power. But those people who have the power to do something for the good of their time, I am sure that they are working around the clock taking care of their business. The simple fact of the matter is that Jordan Maxwell presents the beliefs of the Theosophists and the Illuminati to the public as if they are the sole truth. That is enough to show where his interests are. He is one of Zeitgeist's main sources. He supports astrotheology which Helena Blavatsky packaged and sold to the world elite. And he just advocated the New World Order. You saw it with your own eyes. Statue of Liberty has the crown of thorns. It's the, it's the corona of the sun rays. This is crown of thorns or sun rays. Uh, is there an interesting thing too about the sun is that the ancient world realized that on the December 22nd, which was the winter solstice, they noticed something interesting on the sundials. And of course, the sundials were being round. They could each degree for each day. They noticed that on the 22nd, the sun did not move. On the 22nd, it stayed on the, on the sundial on the same degree. On the 23rd, it stayed on the same degree. It didn't move any further south, and it didn't start back north. On the 24th, it was still in the same degree on the sundial. It didn't move. So they said, the ancient Egyptians said, anything that was moving and is now not moving is dead. So therefore, they said God's son died and was in his tomb or dead for three days. And the sun's demise was fully realized. So the sun, having moved south continually for six months, makes it to its lowest point in the sky. Here a curious thing occurs. The sun stops moving south, at least perceivably, for three days. And during this three-day pause, the sun resides in the vicinity of the Southern Cross, or Crux, constellation. And after this time, on December 25th, the sun moves one degree, this time north foreshadowing longer days, warmth, and spring. And thus it was said, the sun died on the cross, was dead for three days, only to be resurrected or born again. Then on December 25th, anything that was dead and in its grave and not moving for three days, and now begins to move back to the northern hemisphere, it moved its first degree, so on December 25th, it said God's son is born on December 25th. Now, in the real world, let's clarify something for a lot of people who are listening out there. You're not talking anything about Christmas. You're not talking about what Christians traditionally uh, recognize. As no, now, I'm getting at the symbol of Christ. You are getting at the symbolism. symbolism of the ancient religion of the sun, right. which was later perverted in Christianity to reflect this in order to capture the pagan worshippers into the Christian church. Absolutely. Right. right. Now, what I'm saying is that yeah, September the 25th is not Christ's birthday. No, not at all. No. Did you catch what Maxwell admitted? First of all, those claims that Zeitgeist and Maxwell made about December 25th, the Crux constellation and all that, those were all refuted in my film Zeitgeist Part 1 Exposed. But here Maxwell admitted that Christianity is not really the sun worship, but that Christianity was only later distorted by Rome to attract the pagans to convert in art and festivals in order to unify Rome because Christianity was so popular.
He just admitted it. Listen again. It was later perverted in Christianity to reflect this in order to capture the pagan worshippers into the Christian church. Absolutely. Right. Now, what I'm saying is that yeah. December the 25th is not Christ's birthday. No, not at all. No.